Alright, so I'm going to use Photoshop here to show how we would close a diastema case virtually. Uh, just to give the patient something to look at or for treatment planning purposes so that we can know, you know, is this going to look awkward uh, if we try to close this diastema. So here we have the picture that we're going to be working on. The first thing I'm always going to do is I'm going to come over here and duplicate the layer. You always want to leave that initial picture underneath uh, so that you've always got something unaltered to come back to. And then I'm going to turn off the visibility on the, lay on the uh, original layer. And now let's start zooming in. We're just going to concern ourselves with 8 and 9 right here. And so <clears throat> a lot of different ways you can do this. What we're going to do here is we're going to use the, uh, the marquee tool to highlight the tooth. So let's just highlight a, a good portion of the tooth right here over to the contact area. So we're going to highlight that, right click, and we're going to do free transform. Now free transform is going to allow you to stretch this, to skew it, uh, to do whatever you want. And so I'm going to come to the, about the middle of that papilla, close it about halfway with that, and then we'll release it. We'll apply it. Now I'm going to come over and do the exact same thing with the other tooth. Again, I'm going to get the incisal edge and I'm going to get the contact point. Right click, free transform and we'll drag it on over and make a meet in the middle. Okay. So we've got that. Um, if I zoom out a little bit here, you're going to see there's some you know weird things about it. Um, we've still got somewhat of a diastema because this tooth is a bit rotated. Uh, the gingiva up here looks a little messed up, and so let me show you how we would go about addressing that. The other tool I use a whole lot is this clone stamp tool over here on the left-hand menu. We go into that. What this tool allows you to do, it allows you to sample a particular area um, of the tooth. And so you can see the little circle right here. If I push the Alt button, it's going to bring up a little bullseye. And then if I click, that's going to select that as, a, uh, as the color. And so what I can do is I can now take that sampled color and I can um, click it all over the place and I can add to it. So let me show you how I would smooth out the gingiva here. I would get right here, Alt, click, and now I'm going to start clicking my way around smoothing this out okay I'm gonna come over here I'm gonna click on this select a different one because now we're on a different tooth and it could have some subtle differences alright so we've mostly done that now we need to worry about this diastema here so I'm gonna take another sample in this area and we're gonna start just adding to the contact. Now this is just like you know waxing, just doing it virtually. Um, as you get on down to a different part of the tooth, you probably want to sample again because you know the tooth will change as you're going down it. So we're just clicking away. We're adding. Uh, you know, like I said, we're we're basically digitally waxing the tooth. Now let's come over here and start doing the same thing on this tooth. just trying to close that contact up. We'll sample again. All right, so there we go. Now a few other things you could do, you know, if you wanted to bring this corner down, it looks a little short, so we could sample that. Um, you know, we could start clicking away. Um, you can see if we really zoom in here, a few of the, the spots are off here where we had drugged the tooth earlier. And so if I wanted to sample that again and, and restore the, the interproximal areas, we can do that. If I want to clean up a little bit of this um, artificial noise right there, we can do it. Um, and again, I look a little off here, so I might take a bit and... Transfer that. Now, if you've got any areas that um, you know still concern you and you kind of want to blur out, like this area right here, um, I can see the pixelations on that. And so if you're really concerned with it, you can come back and use your blur tool 
and kind of smooth those out. We can smooth this contact that we just made. Um, I try not to, to do any smoothing on these areas where you see light reflection. Um, those tend to, to really add to the lifelikeness of this, this technique. And so when you start smoothing those out, um, it, you know, it really detracts from the overall appearance of things. So we'll smooth that. Uh, let's zoom out and see how we're doing. This could use a little smoothing right here. I guess I should say blur tool. This is the blur. Alright, so overall we're looking pretty good with that. Now, um, if we turn on our original, now you can toggle back and forth and you can see what we've added. And so this is helpful to look and say, you know, is this going to be too wide for this patient? Is, can we even accomplish it? Are they going to look like they've got rabbit teeth? But now my favorite um, feature of this is I can come into this layer and I can turn the opacity down to about 50%. And now this, um, this photo becomes really, really valuable because you can see the ghost image of what we just did um, with our simulation superimposed onto the, the original teeth. And so one thing that, you know, jumps out to me is while the teeth look really nice, you know, can I actually squeeze that papilla as much as I'm seeing right here? If I zoom in on it, uh, you can see I've really squeezed this papilla and I might not be able to accomplish that without some crown lengthening. Um, you know, for your lab, especially if you're adding length to a tooth, this kind of a picture uh, becomes really, really valuable so that you can do lab communication and, and really see where you need to add tooth. Uh, to get the results that you're after. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, I'll try to make some other videos of some other ways that we're using Photoshop.